So this effect uses that anisotropic capability of blurred reflection. How useful the effect is I don't know but it's sort of interesting so I'm going to select my infinite plane and delete that and create a default Bryce sphere. I switch to the overhead view, find my camera and use the option to unreposition it here to, so it'll place the camera at world origin and because in the preferences I have it so that my objects come in at world center those two will align so now I've got my camera sharing the same origin as the sphere I'm going to set the material up so specular halo controls the level of blur that you get from blurred reflections so when I use that effect I'm going to just turn the blur down a bit there you go I don't need diffuse output I want this to be a hundred percent transparent a hundred percent reflective and I can use the anisotropy effect and change its vector so that I can control the blur and the angle at which it's blurring. So uh, by applying the anisotropy control here, this will tell it when I switch it into premium effects. So render options, premium effects, I'll leave it at 64 for now. Select blurred reflections. When, when the light comes into this sphere and gets bounced around on the inside, the number of times determined by the maximum ray depth, the reflections will get stretched and blurred by that effect. Now uh, what I want to work with uh, on this effect, I'm going to use the Skylab here, is stars. So I'm going to turn my stars on, switch to custom field and there we go, give them as much intensity as I can, make as many of them as I can. I don't want the sun and moon as a visible object, I don't need shadows, I'm going to disable the light source. Cloud cover wise, I don't need any clouds. I need to make it night time, so I'll switch the uh, rollerball around there. And in the atmosphere, haze settings, uh, I'm going to choose, and I've written some of these down somewhere, so I'll just pull that up in the other monitor. Okay, I'm going to, I want a grey haze colour, so uh, that's 65, 65, 65. This is just so that uh, it creates a particular level of glow around the stars. So I'm going to set this up so I glow around the stars. Turn the thickness down to zero but I can have a uh, intensity of 21. Colour perspective on and I'm going to set this one at 40. Oops, 40. Uh, make it greener so that's 68 and I have a blue value of 51. Okay so uh, if I use render in scene here you can see I've got these glowing stars in the sky now. Uh, it should render fairly efficiently because there are no light sources. I'll turn the fog off. Uh, but the thing is that what will happen is um, the the blurring will be quite processor intensive. So I'll give this a quick render now. And you can see I've got this effect occurring. And there's these streaks which are as a result of the anisotropic stretching. So I'll just zoom my field of view back so you can get a bit more of this effect in the sky and you can see it looks quite interesting but it will come out a bit grainy because the amount of blur we've got so to overcome the grain as much as possible what I'm going to do is in the render option set us up to maximum uh, rays per pixel which is 256 and then hit render and see what that gives us so there you go not a difficult effect to set up and there's a lot of variation you can put in by changing the vector color or changing the away that uh, the anisotropy is applied. There's a little arrow next to that in the uh, material lab. You can call up things about that, though it's quite difficult to appreciate what's going on unless you've used the effect quite a lot. But just experiment. Uh, and also, you don't have to apply this material that we've created here to a sphere. You can try it on cubes and other primitive shapes. And because a lot of the effect is coming from the repeated internal reflection on the inside of the sphere, then uh, you'll get uh, quite radically different patterns caused when you render it. You could also try rendering this as a 360 degree um, panorama uh, or if you have the spherical mapper then as a spherical map which you could then bring back into your scene and use as a backdrop in your scene if, or as on put on a, a, a surface to create a special effect. So you could just use this on a flat 2D surface for example create an appropriate alpha for it from the dark colors and then you could have it as some kind of uh, science fiction special effect which I thought you know might be an interesting application so essentially that's it I'll let this render out and use the image at the beginning of the video so I hope you uh, found that interesting and that you might explore something along these lines in your own renders cheers now